million. That was easy, right? Now, write an algorithm to randomly choose a number between, between one and a million. Coming up with a procedural method for a random selection can be a little bit difficult. In C++, you could use the random library to choose random numbers, but for some applications, this isn't random enough. I was recently working with a program for which there would be several instances running, and I needed to use a random number generator. A uh, problem I ran into is that different instances of the program were choosing the same sequence of numbers. The random number generator was seeded with the time from the clock, but since these programs were started at about the same time, they ended up with the same seed value. Now there are some other creative ways this could be resolved, but I wanted a random function that was, well, a little more random. Thankfully, this is functionality that already exists within a processor. It's just a matter of using it. Different processors use different techniques for generating random numbers. For the Intel processors, the source of randomness is thermal entropy. The Digital Random Number Generator, or DRNG, is, dedicated, is a dedicated circuit generating up to 100 million random numbers per second. The great advantage of having a hardware random number generator is that it's not predictable. You won't end up with two computers generating the same sequence of numbers. The secret to using this is just to write some assembler. For the general case scenario, I wouldn't suggest the use of low-level code. Once you're in this realm, there are new and different types of bugs that you could create that might not be possible in higher-level development environments. You're also restricting the platforms on which your code could run by doing this. And since this isn't a high demand skill, the code may be less serviceable by other developers. But for my application, I, under, I understand and accept all of this. I'm only planning on running this on a 64-bit processor using Intel's architecture. I'm using Visual Studio 2019. Visual Studio has an ASM directive for including in assembler code in line with C and C++ code. But this directive wouldn't work when I set the architecture to 64-bit. I instead decided to... Uh, put all of my assembler code within an ASM file instead of using the inline assembler. Now, Intel's processors have a number of registers, most of which I'm going to ignore here. But the registers that I'm interested in have many names depending on how they're being used. But irrespective of the name variant being used, the four registers are, are identifiable by the letters A, B, C, and D. Now, when these registers are used as 32-bit registers, you'll, they'll have names like EAX, EBX, ECX, EDX. If they're being used as 64-bit registers, the names are RAX, RBX, RCX, and RDX. If they're being used in 16-bit registers, their names are AX, BX, CX, and DX. Now, over time, Intel has added some additional general purpose regist registers to their processors, but they have slightly different names. Uh, the names of some other registers are R8, R9, R10, and so on. Now I'm going to use register R8 is, uh, for temporary storage, but there's no reason that I couldn't use one of the other ones. So there's two ways in which uh, these registers are being used. One is simply to hold a value. Uh, that value could be uh, for being written to a variable or to perform a mathematical um, operation or as an argument to something else. Uh, the other way that these registers can be used are as pointers. If a register holds the address of a memory location, it can be used to uh, read or write from that memory location. Now, when used as a pointer within code, you see the register name written within square brackets. And a constant offset can be added to whatever value is in that register to read or write to a specific field. Now, the assembler code that I'm writing here only uses four unique instructions. MOV, or move, RET, which means return, CPU ID, and RD, RAND, which means random read. Uh, RET returns to the call of a procedure. You can look at it as meaning the same thing as the return keyword in C. MOV is for moving information from one memory location or register to another. MOV is followed first by the destination of where data is being moved to, and then it is followed by the source uh, of the data. Uh, the two instructions of most important here, though, are going to be CPU ID and RDRAND. CPU ID returns information on the capabilities of a processor. Here, I use it to check to make sure that the processor has a digital random number generator. Uh, if a digital random number generator is present, then we can use the R RD read instruction. RD read means random read. 
it will and it reads a number from the uh, digital random number generator. Uh, the CPU ID instruction needs to know what uh, piece of information that is going to be retrieved. And the way that this is specified is by loading a value into the EAX register. After CPU ID executes in the registers EAX, EBX, ECX, and EDX contain the information that was requested. Now over time, Intel has made new processors and the, valid, the possible valid values for CPU ID have increased. Calling CPU ID with an argument of zero results in the maximum possible valid argument being loaded back into the EAX register. For the computer that I'm using right now, this maximum is uh, in hex 1.4, which is a decimal value of 20. Now, for our purposes, I only actually need to use up to the value of 1. Now, I need to be able to call these instructions for my C and C++. Uh, my C program needs to pass a value into the function uh, that's written in assembler. And the values of all four general purpose registers need to be able to be retrieved and passed back to this C or C++ program. Uh, in the C code, I've defined a structure for holding the four values of the register. I've also defined a prototype for the function that is going to be made available from within the C or from within the assembler code. In the assembler code, these two arguments are passed through the ECX register, which contains the capability argument and the RDX register, which contains a pointer to the CPU reg structure. I need to save the pointer from the RDX register somewhere else because the value there is going to get overwritten when CPU ID is called. I copy this value to register R8. Here's a complete source code for the routine that will let the C program execute the CPU ID instruction. I've saved this in a file named random.asm. To compile this, there are two command line utilities that will be invoked. ML64.exe is used to compile the assembler file into an OBJ file. Then link.exe will package the OBJ file as a lib to be linked to our C program. Both of these executables are in the same folder. I've added the path to these executables to my path environment variable. The location of these files will depend on what version of Visual Studio that uh, you have and where it's installed. This is the path on my system, adjust accordingly for your own system. From the command line, the commands that I use to compile random ASM into OBJ code are ml64.exe space dash no logo space dash C space and then the name of the file random.asm. Now no logo isn't absolutely necessary, but this is specified so that some additional information is well, not really information, but some additional branding is not uh, written out by ML64. I only want necessary information to be printed. Now, if this command runs successfully, there will now be a new file named random.obj in the same folder. To compile this to a lib file, use link.exe space slash lib space random.obj. There's now a file named random.lib. This works, but I don't want to have to drop out to a command line to compile this every single time. Visual Studio supports custom build tool options that will save us here. I've added ra random.asm to my C++ project. Uh, now from here, right click on it select, and select properties. Ensure all configurations and all platforms is selected. For our item type, choose custom build tool and press apply. There's now a new option on the left area for defining the custom build information. For the for command line, uh, for the command line setting, uh, select the drop down and select edit, and enter the following. Here, I've used variables in place of the file name. By using these variables instead of the actual name, if a file was renamed, no further adjustments are needed to the build steps. After adding these two lines, click on OK to save the command line changes. Under output. Enter the value percent open parentheses file name close parentheses dot lib. Click on OK to save the custom build steps. To test them, right click on random.asm and select compile. We've compiled a lib, but it isn't linked to our project. There's several ways that the lib could be linked to the project, but I prefer to use the pragma statement. And the statement is uh, pound sign pragma space comment open parentheses lib comma 
then quotation mark random dot lib quotation mark in close parentheses. I can now call the assembler code for my C++ code. To check for uh, the existence of the digital random number generator, I need to call uh, this function get CPU capabilities with an argument of one. Now when I call it, here's the values that I end up getting back. Uh, the information of interest is in the uh, ECX register under bit 30. If this bit is set, then a processor has a digital random number generator. If the processor does not have a digital random number generator, then a C++ random function will be used. When my code is run on a processor without this feature, it will still run, but just with less randomness. I'm going to declare a function pointer uh, variable and have it set to the C++ rand function by default. If the processor does support the digital random number generator, then this pointer will be updated to point to the assembler code. I'll need to add an extra external declaration in my C++ code uh, for the function that will use the digital random number generator. Here's the full updated C++ code. The function implementation that uses rdrand is only a few lines long. Adding it to the existing assembler code, I now have the following. Now, when I compile this code, it runs, and I'm able to retrieve uh, numbers from the digital random number generator. Since my solution is going to be running in a very limited set of hardware and for a short period of time, I felt that using assembler as a solution was going to be okay. Repeating something that was said earlier, though, I don't encourage the use of assembler in a general case scenario. But everything, when applied with discipline, has its place. Uh, beyond low-level functionality such as drivers, assembly has utility if you need to write high-performing code. If you do find the need to use assembler frequently, an alternative to consider is the Intel C++ compiler, which supports processor intrinsics without the need of dropping out to assembler.